Hello everyone, this is Humanox. Welcome to my third part <laughs> of this little question and answer video series for you. In my last video, I've uh, answered a question from William Littlejohn, uh, who wanted to see how the Digitech works along with the Big Sky. And today it's uh, about the question from uh, null point of four, uh, 242, uh, who wanted to see how it works along with uh, the Analog 4. So without further hesitation, let's get started. Okay, so in uh, this last video of my uh, question and answer video series, it's about uh, a question from um, Nullpointer 242 who wanted to see how the Digitect and the Analog 4 can work together. And um, just a quick side note, I wanted to make this thing as comprehensive as possible and therefore I wanted to cover uh, things like uh, let me show you this, this multi-map added on the Analog 4 as well, because this is really amazing. <laughs> we can not only do keyboard splits and stuff, but we can also do sound blocks and everything via MIDI and stuff like that. But uh, I very soon noticed that the video will uh, be quite long, really long. So I decided to uh, not do it right now. If you really want to see this, um, and if enough of you want to see this, post your comments down uh, in the comment section and let me know. But um, in this video, I want to focus on some uh, main things, how we can control the Analog 4 with the Digitect via MIDI. And I want to cover things like syncing them up, both machines, so syncing the Analog 4 to the Digitect and uh, have those transport controls and everything going on. I want to quickly show you how uh, MIDI CCs work and everything. And um, I also want to show you how we can record uh, nodes on the Digitect um, with the help of uh, the auto channel and stuff like that through um, this keyboard on the Analog 4. And finally, I want to have a look at how we can make program change, uh, uh, pattern changes um, on the Analog 4 with the help of program change messages coming from the Digitect. So um, without further hesitation, let's get started. Okay, the first things, as always, Let's create a new project on both machines. So we are all set. Now, quick look at the routing. Um, MIDI out from the Digitect is connected to the MIDI in of the Analog 4. MIDI out from the Analog 4 is connected to the MIDI in of the Digitect. The left and right output from the Digitect is connected to the left and right input from uh, the Analog 4. And the analog force left and right output is going into the heat, which is recording all of this uh, in the DAW. Now processing is just recording it. Um, and one last uh, <laughs> hint, uh, if you like those videos and if you enjoyed them and if they helped you, uh, you can head over to Patreon and um, try considering to support me if you want. Uh, would be very, very great and uh, it would help me to continue doing videos like this, going more in-depth and answering your questions uh, that you have uh, in kind of a special tailor-made format. <laughs> okay, so um, here we go. First things first, uh, we have created new projects on both machines. Now to sync them up, I first go into the uh, settings of the Digitech because uh, my setup that I have right now, what I want is I want to make the Analog 4, uh, I want to synchronize the Analog 4 to the Digitect. So on the Digitect, I go to the, uh, the settings, MIDI config, sync, and first I deactivate clock receive and transport receive, and now I activate clock send and transport send. Okay, so this is uh, the first thing. Now on the analog 4, I do the same, but vice versa, so to say. I go in the settings and into the MIDI config, and right here on the sync, I have clock receive and transport receive already active. So clock send and transport send is not on. Yeah, and that's the way it should work. If, if I now hit play, you can see the sequencer starts on the Digitect and the sequencer also starts on the Analog 4. Yeah, pretty simple. We can't hear anything because we ha don't have any sounds on them. That's uh, the case. Okay, so um, let's first go uh, on this first track on the Digitect and lay down a very simple pattern so that we have something. And let's do the same right here on the Analog 4. Just something very simple. And now we should be able to hear our machines.
Okay. I have heard uh, the analog four. Why did I not heard my? Ah, yeah. <laughs> One final thing is because I have hooked up the Digitag to the Analog 4's input and uh, not using Overbridge with the Analog 4 to record uh, the external input directly, I first have to make sure on the FX track that um, the inputs are turned off uh, on. So now I'm sure I should be able to hear them both. So that's fairly basic and fairly standard stuff. It works the other way around too. So I go in here and more or less flip those settings. So I turn transport send off, clock send off, transport receive on and clock receive on. And on the analog four, I do the same. Transport receive off, clock send on, clock receive off and transport send on. And now I can control the sequencer of the Digitect from the analog 4. Now some of you might ask yourself, uh, how cool would it be if I could just uh, hit play on one machine starting the other and play on the other machine yet again starting the other. <laughs> um, but sadly I have to say this is not possible. Have a look. If I activate transport send here, and activate transport receive here and now hit play on this machine. You see what happens? We are confused. <laughs> and if I do the same here, nothing happens. So the machines are more or less getting stuck. I would not do this in that case. Uh, you've seen that this is not working. And sometimes it works, sometimes we do not get stuck, uh, but in any way we will not receive transport. So we uh, have to make sure that we have a master machine, which is controlling the other one. Otherwise we run into issues. So I try to get those machines uh, working again. And I try, you see, it's doing weird stuff. So yeah. More or less, everything's crashed a little bit. As you can see, they do weird stuff now. <laughs> so let's turn them off. And this is what I mean. Just make sure that um, you have a master machine and a slave machine, but do not try to mix and match this. Uh, just make sure that they are set up correctly. So first let's go in here and let's uh, change this again. I do transport send and I do clock send because I want the Digitec to be the master. And on the analog four, I revert this back to clock receive and transport receive, but no transport send. Now we should be fine again. So yeah, that's the way how we can sync them up so that the, sequencer, uh, the sequencers are starting. Um, in time. And also when I change the tempo on the Digitec now, you can see how it changes on the analog 4. However, I do not have the option to um, actually change the tempo on the analog 4. If I turn this, you see it says MIDI and I cannot change it, obviously, because it's synchronized to the Digitec. Okay, so that was the first thing we want to uh, see. And now let's have a look at uh, how easy it actually is to set up uh, those MIDI CCs, which is uh, similar to my Big Sky video that I did several days ago. Uh, link is coming up in the top right corner if you've missed that. And um, things with those CCs and stuff like that, it's all working a little bit uh, different on the Analog 4. Uh, because we have actually two ways to control the parameters on the analog four, like the filter here, for example. Uh, first method is by using regular CCs. This is what we do now. And the second method is by using NRPNs. And uh, this is nothing we can send from the Digitec itself. So I won't go into this. Uh, just a quick side note for you. NRPNs allow us um, to send values 
into the machine in much higher detail so we uh, can get a much greater range and uh, this is not working with the Digitech so um, yeah we just do it with regular CCs now and uh, if you have a look into the manual of the Analog 4 there's a very comprehensive uh, MIDI section inside which tells you what you should use and um, if we want to control something like uh, filter frequency from the filter one the frequency uh, we have a look into this list and uh, there are several um, yeah actually several numbers listed up here and the important thing is on f have a look on those things which say uh, CC instead of NRPN and now we look at um, the first row which tells CC MSB and this is actually the value we have to use on the Digitech to control that very parameter on the analog 4. So for the filter frequency of filter 1 I have to use a CC number 18. So I quickly select that one, go to the filter page here, activate it and it will not work yet because we haven't set our MIDI channel. So let's go to this one and activate our MIDI channel 1 which corresponds to track number 1 on the, on the analog 4 by default. And now if I turn on this knob uh, it should work. You can see Nothing's here. If I turn it up, and you can also see how it changes in the display of the analog for itself. Sometimes it uh, gets a little bit stuck or it hangs a little bit. <laughs> you know, just give it some time uh, to actually get this done. And uh, yeah, so that's basically the way how we can do this. Now we can obviously um, go inside here and create a sequence here. First make sure that our sequence is off on the on the analog 4 so we do not get double notes or something and if I play this thing back nothing's in here on the pattern but uh, it's triggered from the analog 4 sequence and we can obviously do some parameter locking stuff here as you can see pretty basic stuff I think you get the idea. Combine this with the trick list, uh, with the trick conditions and everything, and uh, you see how far we can go. The cool thing is because um, this is an electron machine, um, parameter locks here are more or less interpreted in the way we would expect it on this machine. So it's a momentary change. It's not like it was on the big sky where I had to tell the big sky, okay, this is just a momentary change. Um, right here, it's working like this right out of the box. So that's cool. Okay, that's about it uh, in terms of CCs. And uh, now the next thing is, uh, if we want to play chords, it's um, fairly simple. First, on the analog 4, let's uh, go into the kit settings. And let's go into the polyconfig and make sure that those uh, voices are selected that we want to use. And now we can program chords. And I can do it like this. Go up here. Doing a very basic C major chord here. I think it's C major. I'm uh, not so familiar with those scales. <laughs> and um, what I was hoping for is um, that I could program those things and could also trigger them. But as you can see, it's always just triggering the root note. And if I go into the chromatic uh, mode, it's the same. It's always just triggering the root note, so it ignores those additional note offsets. However, when I have steps in the sequencer, they um, are playing those notes. So now we have a chord. along with our parameter locks. So you see, that's how it's working. Pretty simple, pretty easy actually. 
And um, yeah, if it would trigger those node offsets while I'm triggering the track mm. itself, this would be great because that way we could program different chord progressions on those individual tracks right here and uh, just trigger them and record this on the fly. But um, yeah, it's not possible. Okay, so that's about it for this section. Now let's have a look at uh, how it works when we want to record something into the Digitech uh, sequencer. Now, to make this possible, we actually have two ways to do it now. I want to show you the first way, which is the default way and which is basically also the easiest way. And this is with uh, a method um, that Electron calls the so-called auto channel. Now, um, both machines have this auto channel and the auto channel defines um, the channel um, that is used for playing back something on a track of an electron machine which is currently selected. Um, so uh, the track itself is then not triggered by its pre-programmed channel, which uh, like here channel 1, channel 2, channel 3, channel 4, same thing on this uh, little box here, but it's uh, using a dedicated uh, kind of like a master channel which is controlling this. So we can simply switch our tracks and uh, on whatever track we are, it receives those messages coming through that auto channel if we have this set up that way. And it's usually set up that way by, by default. But um, to make it work, we first have to make sure that the auto channel configuration is identical on both machines. So let's go into the MIDI config here on the Digitect and I think it's under channels. Let's have a look. I think it's under channels. So here you can see those track channels. Yeah, and here's the auto channel. It's set to 14. Let's go into the MIDI config on the analog 4. Let's see where it's set to here. Yeah, and you can see here it's set to channel 9, so nothing happens. When I do this, no light is uh, coming up here. So the Digitech cannot receive anything at the moment because those auto channels do not match. Now watch what happens when I do this. Now we are both on channel 9. Let's switch to another track. And now have a look. So it's receiving the notes. And it's also doing it because um, when we go out and go into uh, the port config, down here, receive notes is active. And this has to be active, otherwise it will also not work. If I do this, You see, nothing happens. If I activate it again, it's working again. So this is important. Receive nodes has to be active and the auto channel has to match. And now what we can do is things like record from here to here. And we can also record chords that way. So first let's clear the whole sequence again. And right here we have still this um, yeah, we still have the MIDI channel selected right here, so let's first deactivate it because I want to show you that this is uh, also not dependent on the MIDI channel we have selected. And now I can trigger this, but I could also trigger the internal tracks. Have a look. Let's quickly turn this thing down so that we don't hear it and let's switch through the octaves. No. See? <laughs> and we can record this at any time we want. So let's go to this track and let's quickly set something like this. And let's start record and play. And let's play something here. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm on this channel, so it has recorded it on uh, this track. So let's first clear the sequence again. I don't want to, this to be on this track. Uh, Let's go to this one. Let's do the same thing again. I have no clue <laughs> what I'm doing. I'm just doing, you know, quantizing. Let's have a look how this sounds. Yeah. This is how it works and uh, it's working the same on the MIDI tracks and on the MIDI tracks we can also receive chords. So first let's have a look what we have here. Now uh, 
I want to go in, yeah, let's go to this track and let's quickly clear that track again. Go on to MIDI track and you can see something's coming in. I'm turn this thing up so that I hear it again. And let's actually just simply throw in some very simple chords. Yeah, oops. Let's clear this. Uh, I've uh, cleared the whole sequence. Anyway, get that kick back in. Let's go to this track again. Yeah, wrong octave. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's do this again. We can't hear anything, obviously, because we do not have anything set. But uh, when, we, when we look at the track, we now have this and this and this. So it has recorded the notes, actually, along with the velocity, along with the, uh, with the length of the note and with those individual notes as offsets as well. So you see, this is working. And if I now go in here, and change the activate the MIDI channel again, I can start to trigger this thing with what we've played. See? Here's no sequence. So that's how it's working. Actually fairly simple. Okay. And one final thing is, um, I want to show you now how we can switch the patterns on uh, the analog 4 with the Digitect by using the program change messages. And um, first, let's create a completely new project just so that we get rid of some of the stuff we have. Makes life a little bit easier now. <laughs> okay, and um, much like before with the notes that we've recorded into the sequence of the Digitect. Um, with the program change message messages, it's uh, the same procedure. Um, we are also received and sent uh, through uh, the auto uh, channel. And um, therefore, let's first um, do our classic MIDI setup again. Let's actually synchronize it that way so that the Digitect is yet again controlling uh, the analog 4. Transport receive, clock receive, yeah, that's fine. And while we are in here, you can see in this MIDI sync menu, right below those clock and transport things, we have program change send and program change receive. Now, first thing is we have to make sure that program change receive is set to active. It has to be on, on the analog four. And uh, accordingly, on uh, the Digitect, program change send has to be on. Let's turn that on. And same as before, because those things are set uh, sent via the auto channel, we have to go to the auto channel configuration here, channel 9 here, and channel 14 here, and we have to make sure that those fit. So this has to be set. Okay. Now both are set up in a way we need them. So let's actually go in and um, let's go to a MIDI track. Let's take this one and let's first activate the program change here and um, let's see what happens. Sometimes I had it before that this was already working. I was not, it was sometimes it was not necessary to activate channel nine right here, which is our auto channel. It still worked but uh, sometimes it still did not, but sometimes it also did not work. So uh, let's uh, actually start the sequence in the first place and let's try out if something happens. See this? Now you see, currently it's not working because it's not changing anything on the uh, analog four. So um, let's make this work by actually activating our channel and setting this thing to channel nine. Play this thing back again. Let's start the dialing on this thing and it's still not working. So uh, you see it's a little bit tricky sometimes, <laughs> but it will work once I go in here 
and set something like a trick list trick and parameter lock this one on this pattern, go to this pattern, activate channel 9 again and program change, do another step and set it to step 2. Now we go in here and play this thing back and switching patterns, you can see how the pattern is switching on the analog 4 as well. So once I switch it, see, it's switching it. I turn it back, it's switching it back again. So uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And um, yeah, let's quickly turn down. Uh, finally, let's quickly bring a simple pattern in here. Let's also bring in a simple pattern here so that we can hear something in effect here. This is just noodling around, you know. <laughs> and let's have a listen what this sounds like. Yeah, yet again, I cannot hear the DigiTag because I created a new project. So let's first turn this up. Okay, now have a listen. Really, really basic stuff, but you see that this is working. So um, yeah, that's actually how we can make use of the pattern changes, uh, of the program changes to change patterns on uh, the other machines. And yeah, I hope this has answered some of your questions. Null pointer 242. And um, <laughs> like I've mentioned in the beginning, uh, this advanced stuff that we have on the uh, analog 4 right here in the MIDI configuration, this multi-map edit. If you want to see how this works, let me know in the comments. and. Uh, if enough of you want to see this, I may do another video about this. <laughs> but um, that's it for now. And uh, I wish you all the best, my friends. And I see you in my next videos. Bye.